Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's uh, video for <laughs> where I rank all of the Star Trek Doctors. Now this is a Patreon requested video requested by Patreon uh, Kyrie091 and apparently uh, they informed me that I've been pronouncing the name wrong as Carrie, but it's actually Kyrie. Really apologize for that. Anyway, um, so this is the second video sort of in the series that, that Kyrie is requesting uh, that's similar to this where um, I, you know, they choose a, a profession in the Star Trek universe and I sort of rank each of the characters in that profession. Last time I did engineers. This time I'm doing doctors because damn it Jim, I'm a doctor, not an engineer. But anyway. So I am, as I did last time, I am choosing one doctor from each show. So I'm sorry, Dr. Pulaski, but you are not eligible. Uh, so I'm not doing multiple doctors from the same show, just one from each show from uh, the original series, uh, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, and Discovery, but not uh, Picard because uh, I'm not doing that stupid EMH thing, thing, Majager bullshit. So, <laughs> and as I'm recording this video, Lower Decks hasn't come out yet. I think when it airs, it would come out last week, but still, that's not soon enough to include. There's like the cat doctor who's apparently supposed to be like Dr. Pulaski, so maybe she would be cool to include, but. Yeah, I can't judge it at all for a couple episodes, and of course right now I haven't seen any of it, so I definitely can't judge it. So, uh, just going with the six, and yes, I'm counting Discovery, all you Discovery haters out there, oh, Discovery is not Star Trek, whatever. But I'm not including the animated series or the movies, because that's still Scotty, or the reboots, it's also Scotty. I mean, not Scotty, we're doing Doctors now. Damn it, Jim! I mean, McCoy, it's still Bones. <laughs> it's still Leonard H. McCoy for all of those. So, um, yeah, so just the original series for that, all that, and then Next Generation Deep Space Nine Voyager. 1 H. So, the six Doctors I will be ranking from, in my opinion, from the best doctor to the least best doctor. Because I'm not going to say worse, because they're all good, they're all great doctors. All doctors I would want dealing with an epidemic or virus that turns people into spiders or little kids or what have you. Or old people. Anyway. Or drunk. Um, so, the six doctors I will be looking at are... Dr. Leonard H. McCoy, or Bones. Um, there's Dr. Beverly Crusher from The Next Generation. Dr. Julian Bashir from Deep Space Nine. Uh, the Doctor, very original name, the holographic Doctor from Voyager. Um, Dr. Phlox from Enterprise. And uh, Dr. Kelber from Star Trek Discovery. So, as with the last one, I am trying... It's This isn't a list to rank from my least favorite character to my favorite character, or which character I personally prefer. I'm trying to judge who's better at their job. Who's the best doctor? Who, If I was putting together my dream team... Uh, of uh, the best, like, uh, what are they called? The dream, people do the, the dream football, whatever. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> fantasy football, that's what they call it. So this is my fantasy Star Trek. So where I, and I choose who I think would be the best doctor. Uh, um, yeah, who would perform the best? Who's the best doctor? The best Starfleet officer? Who would I want on my crew? So, as I said, all the doctors are great. There's there's no bad doctor. I wouldn't mind having any of them serving as my doctor. But, if I had to choose an order, this is the order I'd go. So, I'll start with my number six, Dr. Kolber. Um, He's a... Uh, I mean... He died and came back to life, but so did Spock. So, I mean, I guess that's not 
much against him, but he, he's fine. Like, I don't know, to, he didn't really, there's nothing that he really did that went above and beyond. I mean, he did get himself killed because he didn't realize that, uh, you know, the person he was treating was obviously acting weird and it was a Klingon spy and was about to kill him. <laughs> so I do hold that against him. Plus, he was being such a dick when he came back to life, like not wanting to get with Stamets, and it's obvious that he should have. But anyway, <laughs> I'm a changed man, but he wasn't really. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, he's not that great of a doctor. I mean, his bedside manner kind of sucks. I mean, I know there's another doctor who would be much behind my list who's infamous for having horrible bedside manner, but he makes up for it in so, 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 so many ways. Rick Colbert doesn't really. So, I mean, again, great doctor. Proud to have him serve as my doctor, but uh, out of these six, I, I would put him at the bottom. So anyway, <laughs> let me move over uh, to my number five, which is Dr. Beverly Crusher. Now, <laughs> Those from her my channel know I kind of don't like episodes that focus on her. And I always pick on Gates McFadden's acting, particularly in, on the, in those episodes. Like, I just did a review for Subverse, and boy, <laughs> her acting is terrible. And there's also, like, Remember Me, which I don't like. Some of the people like that, but I don't like that. I think her acting is bad. Suspicions, I think, is a terrible episode, and her acting is horrendous. Uh... And then, what, the host, when she has that romance of the week with the trilla, you don't buy. I mean, it's more of the writer's fault, really. Uh, but, basically, alright, here's the thing with Beverly Crusher. And I do want to make this clear. I do much prefer her over Dr. Pulaski. Like, when Dr. Pulaski was on the show, I was like, oh, God, can we have Dr. Crusher back? And when Dr. Crusher came back, I was like, yes! Back. Because I do like her as a character. I think she's a more interesting character. I like her character's interactions with Picard uh, and some of her relationship with Wesley. And I just didn't like Pulaski. She was annoying as fuck. But um, as far as the doctor, her doctoring skills, which is not bad. Like, she's done a lot of great things. She helps. She single handedly cured the uh, virus in Angel 1, that like the Cleon flu virus, by somehow miraculously not contracting it when absolutely everyone else on the ship did. So, I don't know. I guess she has magical powers. <laughs> and, of course, you know, she's done some other... Uh, other great work, other great example, which is always a huge benefit. And she's willing to go to battle. Like, she went to the Borg ship and was, like, shooting Borg. And she commanded, speaking of the Borg, she commanded the Enterprise uh, during the incident in descent with the Rogue Borg and managed to destroy the Rogue Borg ship, which was, like, humongous and, like, much bigger threat than, uh, than the Enterprise. And she managed to do some trickery going into the sun and destroying it. So i got to give her huge props for that. But why then, Mark, is she your number five? <sighs> it really boils down to the episode Genesis, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest here. That she, and this is, I'm sorry, this is a huge blemish, and this is a bit unforgivable. She caused a virus that caused every, all the one to be to de evolved. Even at the end of the episode, she's like, oh, <laughs> Silly me, it's my fault. I actually gave you this thing, Barkley, that you didn't need and, and put your thing into hyperdrive, and it caused everyone to devolve into animals and kill each other, to which, like, at least roughly 10 or 20 people lost their lives. Ha 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 ha, silly me. And we all could have died. Ha ha ha. That is, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is a huge mistake. I, I'm. Honestly, like, she should have been court-martialed or lost her medical license for doing that shit. I mean, that, that is a blemish of all blemish. And let's not forget, she banged a space ghost. <laughs> I mean, come on. Why is she, like, the, the, the Scottish guy trying to warn her not to go to the hoose or, like, the condo, but did she listen? No, she did, and she got possessed by a space ghost. <laughs> was trying to sucking the life out of her. So, 
No. So that's why Beverly <laughs> ranks at number five for me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's get into. And plus, like, she was. When she was in the war bubble and remembered me, it took forever to figure it out. I'm like, come on, Beverly. Not the smartest apple in the bunch. But anyway, <laughs> let's get in uh, to my number four. Now, especially the top four, This is I could take this four and say they're all number one. You're all number one. But this, uh, but I had to do, I had to decide. So even though it pains me to say it, my number four is Dr. Flux. Because if you're not aware, Dr. Flox is hands down my favorite character on Enterprise. And one of my favorite characters in the entire Star Trek franchise. And uh, But this isn't about my favorite character. Otherwise, he would probably be number one or maybe number two. But he would be the yeah, top two at least. Um, but it's not about my favorite characters. And Flox, again, he's a very good doctor. Uh, he's very proficient. Uh, he even, he, similar to Beverly, he commanded the Enterprise once when, uh, but of course there was no one else to command <laughs> except for his delusion of the Paul when everyone had to be put in hypersleep and he was the only one not affected. Uh, so he had to get the Enterprise and he managed, like, uh, something happened with the warp engine, they weren't going to make it and he managed to fix it by himself without, uh, risking Tucker's life, which would have killed him. So he's a very moral doctor, and he's he's one of those guys who's, like, very good for advice and support. And he's, the, the fact that they really play, he's very crucial to the Enterprise crew because he sees things from a different non-human perspective, which is something they're not used to in this time period. Uh, and really, I think that's, that's really helpful. But the reason why Flox ranks slightly lower... And some of these other ones is because of all of his like animals and shit and his leeches and that he has this like zoo. I, I think first of all it's unsanitary to have like a zoo in your sick bay. And secondly, that's silly that a futuristic doctor in twenty I know they're trying to be like, ooh, he's weird and alien, but I always thought his obsession with like bats and, and slugs and, and leeches and what and whatever was a bit ridiculous. It's a bit backwards, I'm sorry. I want some... I want technology in my futuristic shows, not a bunch of leeches. Anyway. <laughs> so, we'll get into my number three... Um, fa uh, not favorite, but most proficient, in my opinion. Doctor, and I'm going to say... Dr. Leonard H. McCoy, Bones... For those of you upset that I ranked Scotty so low, here we go. Bones made it to number three. Probably not, still not good enough for you, but hey, top three. <laughs> um, so, Bones is a great doctor. There's no question about it. He And more than being a great doctor, like he is basically the command staff. He's there with Kirk and Spock all the time. Uh, he's a great Starfleet officer. He's great to figure shit out. And he's a great sounding board for Kirk to give uh, advice to uh, Kirk and Spock. And he's a good go-between uh, between the two. And uh, that's what really uh, helps the crew a lot. And he's just... He's just, uh, you know, he's a bit grumpy, but <laughs> but he is always on top of things. And he's like a go-to man for advice, which is great. Now, why is he number three, not number two or number one? Well, because he is uh, doesn't like to di diversify. He doesn't like to challenge himself and take on different roles. As he constantly says, Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not an engineer. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not an escalator. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a gymnast. Well, damn it, Bones, you should try to push yourself more, not try not limit yourself just to that one little thing. I mean, Dr. Crusher commanded the fucking starship. What are you? You were, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a captain. Well, sorry, Bones, but you <laughs> need to stretch yourself. God damn it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and plus he's racist. 
Let's get the always talking about you green blooded Vulcan. Oh, you fucking Vulcan! You emotionless, green blooded, pointed eared. Like, why are you pointing out his like features? That that's racist. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> Let me get into uh, my number two, and this is tough. This is tough. In fuck, I'm going to go back and forth in this one. This is nearly impossible. But, if I have to, I am going to go with The Doctor as my number two. The Doctor from Voyager. The holographic Doctor, of course. Now, he's a hologram. <laughs> so, he's got a bit of an advantage. And very much like the almost the polar opposite of Dr. McCoy. He likes to diversify himself. He thinks he wants to push himself. He thinks he can be more than a mere doctor. He becomes the emergency command hologram and actually, similar to Beverly, takes command of the starship uh, and does a pretty good job at it. Um, and, uh, you know, I think seeing this character's growth because you said, could say, oh, of course, he's very proficient. He can cure all these diseases and whatnot because he's basically a database. But he's moved beyond that, and it's so interesting to see his journey. And some of the, the medicine that he practices and the, and the uh, stuff that he comes up with is a result of being more than just a database, uh, of his evolution of becoming like a, f a flesh and blood person who likes to sing opera, who falls in love, uh, and all sorts of things. And he was a valued member of the crew. And in fact, he had to prove himself because most people on the crew didn't didn't believe in him because he was a hologram. And But by the end of it, they were friends. And they trusted him with their, with their lives. And they saw that he was a great Starfleet officer. Uh, and a great doctor, not just another hologram. Um, now, his bedside manner was terrible. <laughs> but, you know, that improved, but he became really egotistical and would, like, rant ab and about shit. And plus, like, the way they betrayed him in Season 7 where he was, like, invincible, I thought was terrible writing, so I hold that against this character. <laughs> like, that Renaissance man where he could defeat two. He can't fucking defeat two. Like, that's bullshit. But... <laughs> Um, and so the fact that he's like arrogant and rambling and whatnot, and he wrote that stupid novel where he was, he was oblivious to the fact that he was like bad mouthing his crew and he was being all dumb and arrogant when and Paris tried to point this out to him. So, that yeah, so that's why he's number two and not number one. So, let me get into my number one, which is Dr. Shulian. Bashir. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. I mean, you could say similar to the Doctor, this Julian Bashir is genetically enhanced, but I hated that storyline, and so I kind of hold that against him. <laughs> but he still makes my number one, because similar to the Doctor, you see this character growth. But unlike the Doctor, he grows out of being arrogant. Like, he's arrogant in the first couple seasons, and he's like, oh, I'm going to find the frontier medicine and whatnot. But uh, I just reviewed the episode, The Quickening, in which that really, that challenged him. That was the episode where he really grew past his arrogance, because he's like, oh, this virus, I can cure this in a week. And it kicked his ass. And he, some people died as a result of his fuck-up. But he persevered, so he had strength of character, and he grew as a person. He realized that he was being arrogant, and he, like, hunkered down. He stuck to it, and uh, he came up with a vaccine that cured the babies that, uh, the, you know, in, in utero who were before they are born. So the next generation won't have this deadly virus anymore. And eventually we go. So, and he did that through perseverance, through never giving up. And on top of that, uh, he was always, he's someone you really want on your side. He's always, like, willing to fight to do the best thing, to do what he thinks is right. Um, 
And such as when they were captured by the Jim Hadar, and there was a Jim Hadar who thought he could break himself of the white, and he was willing to risk his life to ensure that. Because if he had succeeded, and I talked about this in my review, if he had succeeded, the Dominion War never would have happened. So damn you, O'Brien, for stopping him. But anyway, um, and and yeah, and and also he took on Section Thirty One. He was he found out about Section Thirty One. Because they tried to recruit him because they saw how awesome he was, but he was he, he his morals were way too high to fall into their bullshit into their trap, and he managed to outsmart them and beat them when they tried to poison Odo to death. That is a strength of character. That is a really brilliant guy. So I won Doctor Bashir as my doctor. Anyway, that is it. For my ranking of all the Star Trek Doctors, thank you so much for watching. Thanks, Kyrie091, for uh, recommending or requesting this video. Uh, if you would like, you can support me on Patreon. It would be very much appreciated. I do Patreon-only videos where I do review episode reviews, where the Patreon supporters get to see them several months in advance, and they get to decide through a poll which episode I will review, as well as I do pre-releases of certain videos like my Star Trek Next Generation season videos, and uh, schedules and whatnot, other little goodies. And it just mainly, it's just, if you want to help support my channel, because it is extremely helpful. But, you know, if you would like to do that, there's a, just follow the link in the description below. But, if you're unable to do that, that's fine. Just be sure to subscribe, leave a like, comment, all that sort of jazz. Also very helpful. So anyway, be sure to check out my channel for many more Star Trek reviews as well as reviews and other shows like Lower Decks, The Expanse, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.